I want to share a couple of Todoist tips for those who use that tool. I've been using Todoist now, I don't know, it's been more than five years anyway. And prior to that, I jumped from this to do software to that one to that one. So I've tried various ones. And um, and then some some of them I tried for like two or three years. Todoist has been the longest lasting one, and I've still been quite happy about it. And uh, it's very simple to get started and it's so full featured now that it's ridiculous. It's it has so many things you can do with it. But let me give you a couple tips. Um, now, one thing that I won't be able to show you is my screen because there are some private to do items there that, you know, um, I wish there was some kind of shell to do as the account I could use and show. Anyway, I'll just talk it through. Those of you who used to do is hopefully will be able to understand what I'm saying. Um, first of all, to doist has different priority levels. There's P1, 2, 3, and 4. P1 is red, P2 is orange, P3 is blue, and P4 is, I guess, clear, clear color flag, four different color flags, four priority levels. And the way I practically use that is P1 is basically before noon, uh, as or like the first part of the day. P2 is the second part of the day. P3 is either like during my... Um, Right now, the way I use P3 is like evening, evening to do's, and P4 is optional slash to be categorized still. So those of you who use it or use some kind of priority level for your task system, that might be real helpful to kind of think that think it that way. Because when you look at the today list, oh, I got a lot of stuff to do today. The first step in prioritizing or decluttering or just making it more doable is to say, well, which one should come first versus second versus you know, optional, right? So again, P1, I say the first part of the day, generally before noon, but it could be like before 2 p.m. or something. P2 is the second part of the workday, you know, um, the final few hours of the workday. P3 is evening slash free time or some pockets during the day, like during lunch, I could look at my P3 items to see if, like more personal type stuff. And P4 is like, I still need to categorize it for today. And then complete option or like right before bed or something like that. So <clears throat> that's one tip that might help. The second tip that's helpful is I find myself using the recurring command a lot. Um, so for example, you know, what's one cool thing about to Todoist is that you can type something out on a, on a task and just with a few keystrokes automatically categorize and put the right due date. So for example, if I said, um, you know, uh, Give Buddy a bath, my my dog. Okay, uh, give Buddy a bath every two weeks. I know it sounds like a, not very much, but you're not supposed to bathe the dog very very often. I actually, to be honest, don't don't tell anybody. I, we we only give Buddy a bath when he rolls in something in the park, so that ends up being like once every three months or something. Uh, I'm not sorry. My 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 wife wipes him down at night, so now we're talking in a dog dog stuff. But so for example, right? Give Buddy a bath. I would type give buddy a bath and this would be during the evening. So it'd be P3, give buddy a bath space P3 and automatically it'll tag it correctly and space, you know, number sign personal is like personal category, right? Personal projects. And then I'll do, and then the final thing I'll type is every with an exclamation mark, two weeks, just type it like that. Every exclamation mark, two weeks. And what it knows how to do is immediately reads that to say, okay, every two weeks, when you complete that item, we will recur it for two weeks from now. So for example, let's say it came up today, give buddy a bath. I'm like, oh, I'm too tired. We're not going to do it to today. Then I will set that to do date as tomorrow. I will click on the due date and I'll, I'll click tomorrow and it instantly leads tomorrow. Okay, good. Tomorrow rolls around. Okay, yeah, we're going give, to give buddy a bath. So we give, gave buddy a bath. I checked that off. And instantly knows, ah, two weeks from the completion date is when it will come back up again. So that's what every exclamation mark means versus every. If you if I just type every two weeks without the exclamation mark after the word every, it recurs every two weeks from the date I set the task in versus the date of completion. For example, if I created the task every two weeks starting January 1st, then even if I postponed the task, I didn't give Buddy a bath on January 1st. I gave Buddy a bath on January 3rd. And then I finally, you know, I kept postponing it. And then I finally checked out. Yes, I did it. It'll still recur on January 
14th or 15th. You see what I mean? Because I started the task on January 1st every two weeks. So then the next date naturally is January 15th. If I put every exclamation mark, but I actually gave Buddy a bath on January 3rd, it'll recur on January 18th because it, it's recurring based on the completion moment instead of based on when I created the task. So that's the cool thing about every uh, with an exclamation mark. And you can even shorten that by doing EV without typing the whole word every, just EV exclamation mark or EV, whatever. So the to do list has like cool little tricks like that where it makes it easy for me to, so I have a bunch of recurring things that come up. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Every six months, every nine months, every two years, every year, whatever it may be, you know, pay property taxes. Actually, that is, okay, that's a good example of where I, I, it's not every exclamation mark because property taxes are due every April and every December. Doesn't matter if I keep postponing it several days, it's still, I still wanted to come up on April that particular day. So then I do not use the exclamation mark. Because anyway, so uh, just a couple of to do is tips. Um, let's see what else is really useful. Uh, oh, very importantly, <laughs> no dating things is because like when you start using a to do software like to do is it's so tempting to set due dates for everything because you don't want to you know you don't want to go into a black hole right like oh i i wanted to come up because i want to keep her being reminded of it want, want this thing to keep slapping me in my face so that i'll actually do it at some point terrible way of productivity just like um let me let me leave this thing on my desktop so i don't forget about it right and then you start accumulating 12 different things on the desktop so you don't forget about it. like i'm looking at this one thing right here it's completely faded into the background. I didn't even know it was there. It's this thing I put there for two months ago. Didn't even know it was there, but it's just cluttering up the stuff. Terrible way of doing it, right? So same thing with to-do to items. You don't just let it keep slapping you in the face and keep postponing it. Bad idea. Practice using no date, meaning there's no date on this thing. There's no due date. But George, it goes to a black hole. But the way you do it is by following what I teach, capture categorized calendar, which is like, for example, an item is oh, books to read is a great example, right? Links to view, right? Movies to watch or software to look at, whatever. I don't want to keep slapping in my face. No, I, I put, a, it's a book to read. I categorize it under the books to read category. And if it's really important book to read, I really want to read this sooner rather than later. It's really going to help my business or my, my put it as priority one without a date. No date, priority one. So next time you're ready to read a book, oh, I have a whole list of books to read. I go into my books to read. I sort by priority. Ah, there it is. Rather than letting it keep on bothering me and cluttering on my to-do list every five days or every two weeks or whatever it may be, just it keeps creating guilt. Not good. So, um, so capture categorized calendar means for every category, like books to read or software to, to, to explore, links to look at you have a calendar recurring calendar spot makes sense you know so every um every two weeks you have a half hour calendar item that says check out your books to read or check out your software to explore and when that calendar comes up you're being faithful to your loyal gentle assistant the calendar your wise past self that says wouldn't it be wise to look at books to read or software to look at every two weeks, every four weeks, every six weeks, whatever. a calendar thing pops up Saturday at 4 p.m. Every four weeks pops up. Oh, good. Okay. Saturday at 4 p.m. I've carved out half an hour to look at software to look at, look at links to look at, look at books to read or whatever. Oh, where do I have? Hmm, where do I have links to look at? Hmm, where do I have software to look at? Hmm, where do I have books to read? Todoist. Let me look at that category. There's no date on these items. Wonderful. I prioritize them or now I can do so a little bit prior. So please no date items. Don't let things keep making you feel guilty or you have to keep postponing things. There's no way. There's no, that's no way to treat yourself, okay? No date items more often. Put in the category and then put a calendar reminder. Slot in some time for that area of life that you care about. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, if I think of any other to-do with tips, I will make a video about it. But uh, for those who use it, I hope this is helpful. And if you have any to-do with tips, comment below. Others will probably find it beneficial as well.